Well, this time of year, corn leaf diseases start to show up, and it's really tricky to get out there ahead of time and know that you're going to have an issue and treat for these things. Well, we wanted to talk about some of these specific leaf diseases you can have in corn, but let's just summarize real quickly. If you have leaf diseases in corn, guess what? you're already too late for spraying. You have to spray before you see these leaf diseases. That is the whole tricky part with this thing. You basically are gambling. You're saying, I think I'm gonna have diseases, so I'm gonna go spray. I'm gonna go spend that $10, or maybe it's $20 an acre by the time you figure application in. So it's hard to do as a farmer. It's hard for me to go out and spend 20 bucks when I don't know I'm gonna have well, a Well, you really need to know your hybrids for their disease resistance. And I know in some areas of the country, uh, farmers are probably a little bit more aware of this than other areas where diseases aren't quite as common. If you've got something like gray leaf spot, it's a really good idea to ask your seed provider, wow, what kind of resistance or tolerance to gray leaf spot does this hybrid have versus another? Because that may change the hybrids that you pick. Well, gray leaf spot is a good place to start because that's the worst leaf disease that you can probably get in your corn. It is a big yield robber. Now we farm in South Dakota, we have not seen a whole lot of gray leaf spot in South Dakota. No, not other on, than the not southern on our area. farm. Yeah, you go yep. further south in South Dakota, when you start talking uh, south of I-90, down along the Nebraska border, we do see gray leaf spot fairly commonly. Yep, and in Iowa, it's a big problem. Illinois, it's a big problem. Nebraska, we've got issues. So gray leaf spot is relatively easy to identify compared to some of the other leaf diseases because it leaves rectangular lesions on the leaf. Again, you know, once you're seeing all these rectangular lesions, you can go spray fungicide, but you've lost most of the yield you were going to lose from the disease showing up. But at least you know what it is to treat for the future. So if you see rectangular lesions on the leaf, that is gray leaf spot. Now, the place that you want to look for these lesions is down on the lower leaves of the plant, and this is going to be true with most of the diseases in corn. They're going to start showing up down towards the lower portions of the plant. So don't be confused. If you've got some nutrient deficiencies out there, you need to know how to identify those as well. But if you're seeing just some spotting on the leaves here and there, chances are you've got a disease issue. If it's rectangular lesions between the veins, you're probably looking at gray leaf spot. Well, there are some diseases gray leaf spot gets confused with, like northern corn leaf blight, southern leaf blight, and the anthracnose, because they're also going to have lesions on the leaves, but those are not rectangular. So if you're seeing any any of those other diseases, you're going to see some lesions there, but they aren't going to be rectangular like gray leaf spot. Well, the other thing that you may see is you may see some raised, rusty looking pustules, and what you're really <laughs> looking at is rust. Here's the big difference with rust compared to these other diseases. Rust is not going to overwinter in the northern United States, so it's got to blow up from the south every year. So rust a lot of times will get started a little later in corn or in wheat than some of the other diseases. But many of these diseases do start to show up around tasseling time, so it's in July sometime when you start seeing disease problems. Now, a lot of times the diseases have actually entered into your plant a little earlier because by the time you see an issue, you've already lost significant yield. Well, if you're talking about treating for these things, like Brian mentioned earlier, you've got to be ahead of the game treating diseases on leaves before you really see them. Now, at this time of the year with tassels starting to emerge in some parts of the country, it's a little bit tricky because you could damage the crop a little bit, but if you can wait just a little bit until those first silks are starting to appear on the ears, then it's a real safe time again yeah. to spray some fungicide. So at that point, you can pull the trigger on a headline or a Stratego or a quilt or whatever fungicide you're going to be using. Now, one thing we should talk about because we've we mentioned this spraying later in the year and using fungicides to control disease, but there is a disease called Stewart's wilt that we don't usually have to spray a fungicide for. We need to spray an insecticide and that's a little unusual. <laughs> Chances are what you've really got is a flea beetle problem out in your field. Or you so, had a flea beetle problem very early in the season. So you need to be looking in your fields uh, to see these tiny little black bugs, and they really are going to look like what you would think of when you think of a flea. They're going to be jumping around. So when you get out there and you see them, chances are you aren't going to see them very long because they're going to start bouncing around trying to get away from you or just going about their business. So if you do see that you've got some flea beetles out there at some point during the year, you need to get out there and treat with an insecticide. Now as the quick as you can. And, and here's the other thing with those flea beetles. A lot of people think that, oh, I've got poncho or cruiser on my seed. That's going to kill 100% of them. That's not going to happen. It does have some activity. So we have less pressure than we've ever had before because of these seed treatments, but they're not 100%. Exactly where I was going. Those products are pretty effective and you can actually find a, a poncho or a cruiser in some post-emerge formulations of insecticide as well. So you may think about that when you're spraying post. Maybe you don't want to use the same thing that you use pre and hit that insect with the same mode of action two different times. 
Maybe you want to come in post-emerge with a pyrethroid or with something like Lorsban to get a different mode of action than the neonicotinoid seed insecticide treatments. Again, there are a lot of different leaf diseases in corn. It's no wonder why so many farmers are spraying fungicide around the country or insecticide if, you're, if you've got a flea beetle problem. I guess the biggest thing we wanted to make you aware of today is all the different possibilities there are of things that can show up in your field. And again, it depends on the cost or the price of your commodity as to whether or not you decide to treat on your farm. But we want you to get out there early to spray rather than waiting until you've got a full-blown problem. And like on our farm where we're going for big yield, we're probably going to be more likely to treat than if you've got 100 bushel corn potential. But, you know, we're shooting for 200 bushel corn now and actually 250 on some fields. And also if you're in continuous corn, chances are you're going to have a little more likelihood of having some of these diseases. Right. Or if you're in a reduced tillage situation, you've got more likelihood for disease, as is in the case for just about every crop you're going to raise. Well, I don't think it matters if you've got continuous corn or first year corn as to whether or not you're going to have our Weed of the Week. But we'll tell you how to stop it one way or the other coming up later in the show.